What's going on? You're in the Beat Sessions. I'm your host, Mitchell Weary. Hope all of you are enjoying the start of your weekend. Friday, November 4th, another big album release day. Lots of records dropping. So I hope all of you have had a chance to, to find something that is uh, going to drive your weekend. For the channel, though, got to kick things off with Phoenix. Very excited to talk about these guys and this new record, Alpha Zulu. This is the band's seventh studio album and their follow-up to 2017's Tiamo. The trio from Versailles. It's wild to think that these guys have been around for almost 30 years. There's been about two decades now where they've really been on my radar and I've been enjoying them. But the dynamic that exists between these guys, the the music that they put out and the way the creative process comes together, I think are two big factors that make their music so unique after all these years and what make this new project, Alpha Zulu, probably their best record since Wolfgang Amadeus Phoenix. There's that great pop sound that they have. It's just, it's got wonderful flair. It's never over the top or too bubblegummy, <laughs> so to speak. And I like the rock and roll elements that are there. I really, Christian and Lauren, their, their guitar playing, I like the jangle pop that, the, uh, that they work with. Lots of arpeggiated riffs. And I like the way that more often than not, those riffs take a back seat to a lot of other instrumentation that is going on in their compositions. It's something that you don't see a lot of guitar players do. Generally, I feel like in the history of rock and roll, the guitar is that instrument that's out there in front. So I appreciate the way that these guys, it, it doesn't feel like ego is a factor. And it, it's definitely a big part of why this band is still flourishing with that sound, still working within that wheelhouse after all this time. I really think that coming together, having... You know, all these guys being able to have an impact on the songwriting process, both lyrically and musically, creates an energy where, you know, it's just like everybody's bringing something to the table. And it's almost it's almost as if it's the way that these guys choose to communicate. And I'm, I'm sure that Thomas Mars, if you asked him to some degree, would argue that that's what's going on here. Some tragedy driving the creation of this record. Longtime collaborator Philippe Zadar passed away in 2019. Uh, produced three of their records, but I'm almost positive that he, you know, there was records where he doesn't have a production credit. He consulted, he worked with them, very influential to this band over the years. And so this is the first time that they come together and he's not there with them. And it's, it's tragic, but it's, it's magical at the same time. The song identical as, uh, is what they wrote after he passed. And Thomas, I believe it's Thomas that says that, you know, they they came together and instead of talking about it, they just wrote this song and and poured their emotions into that. And you can feel it. It's it's a lovely track. I love the way that on this record versus Thomas Mars' wife, Sofia Coppola, uh, used the song for the film On the Rocks back in 2020. But the album version that we're getting is fleshed out. And I really love the build in the song, the way that it carries for five minutes. It's a great way to close out this record. And I think it highlights what this band was looking to do. Coming together through COVID to make this record. And the process started actually with Thomas being stuck in the States. So I know that that time apart was frustrating. And again, you talk about this band and you know using the songwriting process as a form of communication, a, a form of, of being on the same page with each other. And so to record this album, they book some studio time at the Louvre. It's so cool that for 10 days, they really approached the process with almost nothing. I mean, they had some things in place. They had the song identical, but for the most part, it was let's move into the space, use it as our muse. And you talk about that period of COVID where that's a, a lovely facility that's meant to be full of people enjoying the history of of art in, in so many different capacities. It's an amazing facility if you've never had a chance to go there. And, you know, the band talks about wandering around the place alone and having it, you know, pretty much to themselves and just that that weird paradox that's there. Um, you know, having having the ability to enjoy something like that on your own, but ultimately having the reality set in that, you know, this is not what this space is meant for. This is not what this was, you know, supposed to be like. So I love the way that that, you know, the psychology of all that pushes the creation of this record. And Thomas talks about how albums are a snapshot of, of a period in time. And so I, I'm digging that. I dig the perspective. I dig the way that this is a record that's inspired by that period of time, but it's not about it. Uh, it's something that we talk about a lot on the channel. It's still coming up. And, you know, I imagine that even a year from now, we'll probably be mentioning albums that to some degree were inspired by this period of time. But I just, I really dig the way that these guys 
chose to come together, um, you know, in light of, of multiple, you know, tragedies within their lives, the, the death of Philippe, having to deal with that time apart and, uh, and being isolated in COVID. And musically, I, I think that that's what's so great about this record is that there's this element of restraint that I noticed in the production. And it's, it's that feeling that you get where it's within that restraint, it's almost like you can feel the tension and that, that burst that all of us felt I imagine being stuck inside and wanting to just get out and get back to normalcy, doing the things that we all enjoyed and loved doing. So I really think that that tension comes off so well in the music on this record and thematically as well in the lyrics. That's what I've always dug about these guys is that that's that balance of that light pop flair, but there's substance and, you know, whether it's history, whether they're talking about, you know, something thematically, love, uh, whatever it might be, these guys, their music is is rich uh, musically, but it's also rich in content as far as what they're bringing to the table, what they're, you know, what they're trying to open all of us up to. And the second listen of this record is, is really where I got that. I would say um, this thing is probably going to take a couple of listens to really hook you in. The first listen, it just sounded like a Phoenix record, but I went to the record store. I was impressed enough. I love this band, put the wax on, put the headphones on and really just uh, went to work with this thing. I would recommend following along with the lyrics. I really love the exploration there. There's some, some good, some really good material on this record. And um, it, I, I, yeah, I, I have no problem arguing that this is, Certainly their best record since Wolfgang Amadeus Phoenix. And who even knows, over the test of time, this thing could surpass that record. I'm really impressed with it. I really love the way that this project came together. Starting off with the title track, Alpha Zulu, kicks in with a simple but solid electro rock groove. I really dig the hook on this song. It's got a nice minimalistic feel. And talking about that restraint, it's uh, it, I'm, I'm impressed with it. And this album in general has got this really nice soft rock flair that... When I get there towards the uh, towards the end of the uh, the track list, it's funny, but it it took me the penultimate track to finally realize what I was feeling on this record, and it made me smile a little bit. But I love it. I uh, I'm loving what's going on here. Your second track tonight, featuring Ezra Koenig. That's just a uh, some fan service right there, and I love it. I feel that his you know his presence on this song is is phenomenal, and it's a great guest appearance on this album. I dig the bass riff. Um, Deck Darcy doing some great work on this record as well, um, demonstrating more restraint on the song it fills out um and but builds in at some some moments as well there's a couple moments in the song where it really just shines and i like the 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 movement in and out of those parts a really nice composition the only one your third track bright sense to open mellow in the verse but uh pops up in the chorus i really like the you know just the shift there and the uh and the way that the chorus gets a little brighter there after midnight picks up the tempo this is uh you know probably the most upbeat song to this point synths and bass give this thing just a really nice solid 80s feel that's definitely what i was feeling but it's it's also written in a way that it, it feels timeless and it's a testament to these guys too really just working with that same sound it sounds like a phoenix record but it still sounds so fresh, just like these guys, you know, just started working together. Like they've only been in a band for a year. It's just great to feel the energy coming off of this thing. It's such an intangible thing. And I think it's a matter of opinion. And some of you might disagree with it. But I think, uh, you know, just the energy of this record is very strong. Winter Solstice is going to wrap up your A side. It's got this gentle bass drum that builds the foundation of the song. It's almost just like meditative, the way that the... Uh, that bass drum just like takes hold and hooks you in. But uh, I really like the way the vocal comes in over that. Synths work in and uh, really dig the guitar work. This is a great example of the way that Christian and Laurent, their their guitar work can take a back seat, but still serve such an amazing role in the song. Season two is going to kick off your B-side. Synths to open, funky bass. It's a really nice way to to open up the, the B-side of the record. Um, and I really like the way the, uh, the song has this great light feel, but I, I feel the groove is... This song is groovier than most of the songs on the record. I thought it was a, a, a nice start to the B-side. Artifact, your seventh track, kicks right in. You got this, um, you know, it's going to maintain that that mid-tempo feel that uh, Season 2 established. And I like the I like the nuanced sense of urgency in this song, though. As, as chill as it is, there's something about it that's really driving. And I think that the lyrics reflect that as well. It's uh, a, a probably 
probably my favorite song on the album. If uh, if you're going to make me pick one, I really like that track a lot. All Eyes on Me. Uh, vocals dominate the intro on this guy. Light instrumentation that kicks in. You get this um, just uh, really just like blissful feeling from that. And it's uh, balanced with this like spooky sci-fi electro vibe. This song is mixing things up. It's certainly the most interesting track on the record, I will say. Leads into your ninth track, My Elixir. I love the intro and the build. Um, it just it keeps this easy listening feel and it finally hit me jerry rafferty if i had to pick anybody that i'm feeling on this record jerry rafferty is the songwriter and this particular track reminds me of right on down the line and uh as soon as the chorus came in i just like i i felt kind of like a similar vibe in the hook in the feel and uh and i love jerry rafferty i love baker street i, I mean it, the, the guy is He's got just a, a great catalog of amazing soft rock music, and uh, and this album, I just it has that feel. I'm I'm gonna argue that um, you know if you're gonna make me pick an artist, it's him. Identical, your final track, uh, beautiful way to close this thing out again, and inspired by Philippe, it's um it's gonna really feel like that light at the end of the tunnel moment, and it's um it's gonna really just make this album feel complete. It's a full circle moment that 35 minutes, it's a little hot with 10 songs, but the the quality of the record, in my opinion, is phenomenal. The produ production is great, excuse me. And um, man, it's uh, after five years, I, I'm, I'm loving that these guys are back and putting together such an outstanding album. This is a vinyl please for sure. Um, certainly could work its way into the top 10 discussion. We're really excited to to start digging into that process once December rolls around and the album releases roll off too. Uh, you know what? I'll go ahead and mention in this album review, if you've hung around long enough, it's uh, it's worth mentioning that in a couple weeks, hopefully, I, I'm able to purchase the walls around me and we're able to do some renovations to the studio in December to get the uh, to get everything ready for the live show. It's, uh, it's going to be really exciting. And so through that process, we're going to develop a Patreon. You guys are going to get some an inside look into into the building of the studio we're going to be redoing the floors doing some other stuff it's exciting we're very uh, very excited for the growth of the channel and what's to come into the future so hope you find this review helpful hope you are excited about the channel and the weekend and all the great music that we have ahead of us please stay tuned for more album reviews throughout the week like this video subscribe to the channel do all the things to help us blow this project up and we will see you next time on the beat sessions